Welcome to our RegTech Summit virtual keynote with Vincent Kilcoyne, Executive Vice President of Product Management at SmartStream, who will be discussing how to leverage regulatory initiatives to deliver operational control. We would like to say a big thank you to our platinum sponsor, SmartStream, our gold sponsors, Thomson Reuters, Finergo, OneTrust, ITRS, Three Lines of Defense Consulting, Six, and the Derivative Service Bureau, and our silver sponsors, Resco.net, Cedar Rose, Eventus Systems, Compliance.ai, and Kingland. If you would like to ask Vincent a question, please use the comment function next to the session or use the contact details at the end of the presentation. Um, hi, my name is Vincent Kilcoyne. Um, I'm Executive Vice President, Head of Products at uh, SmartStream Technologies. Uh, you probably know of us. Uh, we work with um, probably close on about a thousand financial institutions all over the world. And our specialty is providing solutions that address many of the operational challenges for the banks globally. Uh, my background is working in technology for a number of banks and global vendors. And uh, as part of that, I've been part of the uh, solving of operational uh, trading, risk, back office, settlement, um, and such type of challenges for organizations all over the world. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be talking to you about how the current change and turmoil uh, that we are encountering from the point of view of new and emerging technologies, uh, new and uh, future and planned uh, regulatory changes can all provide both an interesting challenge and a set of opportunities for us collectively to really drive improvements in the way in which we do business the way in which we manage and optimize our business to drive real control from the point of view of compliance, from the point of view of cost, and also from the point of view of optimization of revenue. So without further ado, I'd like to step onto the next slide. What I'm going to do today is take you through a number of different views of the world and look at the way in which the world is changing in terms of regulation, looking at how the world is changing in terms of technology, and then we'll see how do we approach those problems um, for you, and how can we leverage certain elements of that. So what I'm really going to be talking about is how do we really bring those solutions together to leverage the respective functionalities of each from the point of view of processing, optimization, compliance, etc., to actually get a combined solution that delivers benefits that were not originally anticipated when we designed and delivered the solution for the discrete problem that we solved. And this is something that I'd ask you all to look at as we go forward. Next slide, please. So from the point of view of change, we can see that the world is changing incredibly. We can see that we've got regulatory change, we've got technology change, and, and let's not even bother talking about the current operational turmoil that we are seeing, where the vast majority of our well-designed BCP plans um, have, shall we say, taken somewhat of a challenging um, sideward step in terms of what they've ended up presenting us with, where we can't really use many of our BCP locations. And this is something that I'm particularly proud of within, within SmartStream because um, we have uh, both solutions and also a number of services in the form of well, one of our services is, is the on-demand and the other one is the RDU, the reference data utility. And what we've actually found is that a lot of our clients are reaching out to us to thank us because we've been very much a shock absorber for the current events and we've ensured that their operations have continued to operate smoothly. So let's step forward and look at the, oper at the regulatory change. And we can see that regulations coming down are very, very topical. I always like to use a, a word cloud because it lets me see how often people mention certain terms. And we can see here that compliance is front and center. And we can see that experience is also a very interesting word. So that's something that I'm very proud of within SmartStream because we've got in industry practitioners who have been operating in the industry for 30 and 40 years. And that's something that we're really, really proud of. And we share that. And that manifests itself not only in the solutions that we actually deliver, but also the services, the advice, the guidance, et cetera, that we bring. If we step forward, we can then 
pretty much present a slide that everybody sees and potentially some of you will smile at. When we look at regulations, uh, there's a lot of tape um, and they're all very complex. But the very interesting thing is that when you look at certain regulations, for example, BCBS 248, all right, uh, from the point of view of intraday liquidity, when we talk to certain organizations, they say, well, we have the regulation, but we need to see how does that manifest itself in reality in our organization. So there is a degree of interpretation of that regulation, and that's something that we work very closely with. So the regulations themselves, in every way, shape, and form, are actually inherently complex. Next one, please. Now, this is a slide, um, thanks to Moody's, I find incredibly insightful um, and also somewhat scary, because when you look at this, it gives us a very good representation of the amount and volume of regulatory uh, activity that has been happening since 2015. So what is this very much telling me? Well, if we look in the, in the period of 2015 to 2018, we can see a lot of local and regional regulation. And one of the things that was very interesting is as we stepped forward, we could see that a lot of the regulators were coming together and working together. And now, as we move out into the 2018-2019 time period, we can see a growth in, and an increase in the amount of global regulation. So there's a huge volume of regulation that is coming down and that is already in our midst, and we address these on a daily basis. So what has typically been happening within most institutions is that um, they undertake individual compliance projects for each piece of regulation. And this is it. They approach it from a point, point regulation perspective with an individual data store or a reporting mart or a data mart or something that is unique to that piece of regulation. So this is something that we're finding in most of the organizations that we've been dealing with when it comes to solving for discrete regulations. Move on, please. Now, in addition to the changing world of regulation, we've also got the changing world of technology. And there are many disciplines. And when we look again at word clouds, we can see that AI, machine learning, deep learning. Now, my background is, uh, is actually AI. So I did a, a PhD in uh, the late 80s. So um, I've largely been a, an incredibly frustrated AI practitioner for the last probably 30 years. Why? Because the technology was not available to deliver the actionable outcome from any level of rich AI capability. Right? And that has changed in the last few years, the amount of compute power that is now being mobilized to the industry and the ease with which people can actually build models is increasing. But what it has meant is that there's an emergence of a new discipline, probably within the last five to seven years, of a data scientist. And this is something that many organizations are now seeing because it is literally the fact of using analytical science on the data within the organization to change really high value outcomes, to deliver really actionable intelligence and drive and improve on the wisdom and, and the quality of the decision made. But again, they are plentiful and complex. So there's an incredible parallel between what's happening in the technology world and what's happening in the regulatory world. They're both plentiful and they're both complex. So what I decided to do was to look at these two worlds. All right? And I decided, well, if I take this and I say, well, look at the regulations and look at the technologies, can we actually group regulations into different categories effectively? or genres, whatever term you want to use. So for example, if we look at the concept of conduct as a, as a behavior, we can see that there are a lot of regulations immediately identified in the, the outer semicircle, which are things like shareholders rights directive, GDPR, MIFIR, MIFID, best execution, CSDR, MAD, MAR, etc. So we can see all of these. And why are these of relevance to me? Well, from, from my point of view within SmartStream, we've got solutions that are actually directly in that space. So for example, we've got a corporate action solution and SRT2, SRD2 is absolutely front and center within our mindset, within what we solve in there. 
we also have a very, very rich functionality in fees and expense management. And that directly relates to best execution and CSDR and a number of other regulations. But what I wanted to try and do was to take these different regulations and break them into sectors where we could try to understand. Then if we look at financial crime, well, we'll these are all pretty much, again, self-evident. We're looking at the AM, AML um, uh, directives. We're also looking at FATCA, GDPR, MAD, MAR, et cetera. And then supervision as we move around. We can see BCBS IOSCO on the UMR. Well, how relevant is that? Well, massively relevant to SmartStream because we've got one of the largest collateral solutions, uh, client bases on the planet in terms of in terms of the actual size of the clients that we work with and the depth and richness of the functionality. So in, if you look at every single one of these sectors, we have to solve for problems in each one of these areas. Now, if we step further inside, we're looking at the technology stacks. And these are the problems that we have to look at. We have to look at how do we use these technologies to be able to deliver these solutions. And we've created an innovation lab at the very heart of what we do to look at how we can actually take these technologies and surface them, use them, deploy them to solve for these broad spectrum problems. So within every one of, one of our solutions, we're looking at how we can solve that and how we can leverage the technologies to actually solve for discrete and broad problems. But fundamentally, everything is underpinned by the data and the quality. So when we look at SmartStream, what, what we really do, fun, what we do focus on is the quality of the data that underpins everything we have. And the data itself can move at different speeds. So we've got real-time data, we've got messaging, we've got payments, we've got all of that information coming and moving around the place. And that then overlays itself against certain regulations. So, for example, if we look in the bottom left-hand corner, we can see payments and liquidity, and we have the regulations of BCBS 248 and prior to that 238. So we're talking here about intraday liquidity, being able to understand and see and actually make decisions about my real-time liquidity to make projections, to understand, to be able to run stress tests. And this is all underpinned by what's happening in the industry. If we move further around to the right, so I know I'm dancing around this quite a lot, but I think that this slide pretty much sums up the financial sector. If we move around to the right, we can see this evolution concept. So what happens when you bring technology and regulation together? Well, we've now got payment service providers who are actually using a lot of the functionality within the banks to provide a lot of the services they do. We've got digital-only banks. We've got new venues. We've got cryptocurrencies. And today, somebody was only advertising that they were offering higher interest rates on crypto investments. So we can see what's happening here. And also, we've got e-wallets. And this is just to name a few. So we can see how the industry is manifesting itself. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we can see how organizations are really using the technology to provide new types of services. They are a technology and a service first. So this is very much an innovative and an evolutionary way of thinking of the problems. Move forward, please. So where do we fit and what do we do and how relevant is that to what smart screen do? Well, on the right-hand side here, we can see the areas that we have got solutions in, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Now, this is very interesting because we created an innovation lab to, to, to do two things. Firstly, to build us some real pure AI solutions, but also to build us a wealthy um, uh, repository of um, AI and machine learning um, engines and libraries that we can then subsequently use across all of our solutions. And I'll talk about that when I step through some of our solutions. And this is something we're very proud of because what we have is our own internal team and innovation team who have as a very simple set of criteria, the simple question of, how relevant is what we're about to do? So when we build an AI model or an AI engine, or we look at an AI use case, we look at it from the perspective of what's the benefit of doing this? What is the operational improvement? What is the benefit to our customers of us doing it this way? So we always look at the relevance 
of what we're about to do and it has to be able to provide an important good high quality outcome and high value outcome for all of our clients as we step down through that we've then got reference data well as we all know this is absolutely pivotal and our reference data utility within SmartStream has been used by a number of banks globally. And as we move forward and we have problems like SFTR, et cetera, and increasingly as other regulations start to start to dig in and become more relevant, we can see that the reference data and the quality of that data and the availability of that data is becoming ever more relevant. So our reference data utility is something that a lot of organizations are looking at to see how can they take advantage of the fact that there's a team who are cleansing the data, and they can have one source, and effectively a clean golden source of high quality information. Now we start to move on to the other elements. Everybody knows SmartStream for reconciliations, matching, and exception management. This is what we're extremely well known for. And we've got organizations all over the world using the solution from medium, small to medium sized buy side to major tier one financial institutions. Again, cash and liquidity when we move on. But it's very interesting because our cash and liquidity solutions are underpinned by some of the previous elements in this list, for example, real-time reconciliations, so that I can actually reconcile a projected receipt, a projected payment, with a real receipt or real, real payment. And then that gives me real-time information so I can have true understanding of my cash and liquidity position. Collateral management, again, one of the, one of the biggest solutions that we have within the business. And again, addresses the needs of a number of, of, of types of organizations in both an on-demand and in a host delivery model. When we look at our corporate actions process, I'll step down through that again on the next slide. We go also through, we have rich solutions in digital payments and investigations, and we have extremely strong capabilities in terms of fees and expenses management. All of these are relevant why? Because they are data, they are operationalization, they are improvements, and they're all driving towards optimization. Next slide, please. So within our data solutions, what are we really trying to do? Well, we're trying to drive operational efficiencies through the quality of data. What we're trying to do is make sure that I have got the same quality of data across all my different systems. So if I'm doing upgrades or migrations or I'm connecting inbound systems with internal systems, etc., all this drives towards automation and control. So if we're looking at faster payments or we're looking at anything where data is pivotal to the actual ongoing operational integrity of the organization, this is where we sit. We're at the very heart of that. And that drives the digital agenda and it ensures speedy remediation of disconnects or breaks throughout the organization. When we look at the next solution for cash and liquidity, again, I've mentioned it earlier, but this is a regulation rich environment. And it is very challenging because we're talking about large quantities of data, we're not talking about high monetary volumes, values, and we're also talking about highly visible to the regulators and to the industries as a, as a whole. So what we really drive here is about managing cash positions and liquidity through full visibility, right? In an online and the short term liquidity positions. So intraday, obviously it addresses intraday, but fundamentally it was designed using the smart stream philosophy around looking at high velocity data. So real time data driven information. So this is a classic case of where you take reconciliations and you combine it with cash management and you end up with a real-time cash and liquidity solution. This obviously makes it possible for you to mitigate liquidity risk, but also in addition, it drives you towards avoiding any capital add-ons, capital buffer add-ons, and drives a real cost improvement and efficiency within the business. But the goal, whole goal here is to provide you with a full insight of cash and liquidity across front, middle, and back office. And this is all around quality of information and confidence of information because that ultimately drives good decision making. Again, when we look at our collateral management solution, we're talking about a full spectrum collateral management solution with extensive connect connectivity to internal systems, obviously, that makes total sense, but also to the industry utilities. 
And one of the big challenges right now from the point of view of collateral management, because it's just the way it is and it's a huge amount of regulation around it, is the ability to support the extensive eligibility criteria. And this is something that you know we're more than willing to talk to discuss with you if you reach in and have a chat with any of us. Um, we're, uh, as again, uh, the collateral management business is founded and is staffed by um, a rich uh, collection of industry practitioners. So this is something that's very, very different about SmartStream. We've all actually done the stuff from an operational perspective. And one of the important things, again, is the support for local and global regulations. This, as we, if, if we go back to the original slide, which was the Moody's one, you can see the changing world of both global and local regulations. Now, corporate actions processing, again, this is a, another industry that's becoming extremely relevant. It's a problem space because it's high risk. If you fail to process an event, it is brand, reliability, reputation, and relationship with all of your clients. But there are obviously a huge amount of regulatory pressures to make sure that this is done efficiently and that you're actually in, integrate with all of the necessary platforms to be able to pull the data. So if we move on from here, we can start to look at how that comes together. And the whole goal here is to say, well, if I combine my different solutions, which have been designed to address regulatory problems or are coming into focus because of regulatory initiatives, do I get a better outcome? So if we combine our data reconciliation and cash and liquidity, we're able to give a real-time view of cash positions and a real-time view of cash flows. And what this also means is that I can then drive my scenario, my stress testing, and I'm able to have a real what-if view of the world, not only from an external compliance, but also from an internal policies, controls, and procedures. If we also look at combining cash and liquidity with collateral, what do we have? Well, we have improved inventory management. We have better and more, more transparent source and uses of funds. And then we're always looking at optimization of collateral and assets. I have a very simple philosophy that if you aren't looking at an opportunity to optimize for something, you're not solving for the right problem. You must always focus on how can I deliver something more optimally? Can I optimize my cost? Can I optimize my control? Can I optimize my errors? Can I optimize my breaks? Can I optimize the quality of my data? Can I optimize my decision making from the point of view of quality and time? Then if we bring together cash and liquidity with AI, this is another one, we're able to deliver predictive analytics using the AI and machine learning to give control to treasures, et cetera, in terms of being able to predict potential crunches or missed payments or late payments. So this is obviously where some of these combinations come together to deliver more optimal decision making and better use and reduce costs. Because if I can predict more confidently, then I can actually manage my buffers more confidently as well. And more optimally, which decreases the cost to my balance sheet. Next slide. Again, combining data reconciliation with fees and expenses. So this drives and delivers me a real cost understanding of the cost of providing services to my payment service providers. If I am a bank and I am providing services to third parties, fintechs, etc., I want to be able to understand how much it costs me to provide that service. A real journey towards understanding cost of providing a service to the customer. What is the cost of the customer? Ultimately, you must understand this. And then if we combine collateral or collateral management with artificial intelligence and reconciliations, we get interest dispute reconciliations, we get dispute reconciliations, and we get migration reconciliations. Why is that one important? Well, as you move across systems, you wanna be able to make sure that the data you have in system A is, can be reconciled with the data you have in system B. And, or in some cases, you may want to use the AI engine to actually build and carry out some of the ETL work for you in terms of piping the data over between those systems. So this is just a small subset of us looking at how we can combine systems 
and solutions that have come about as a result of regulatory initiatives and as a result of technology change within the industry to provide a better outcome than if you just looked at an individual solution from a clear vertical. If I look at reconciliations on its own and if I look at cash on their own, I have the ability to solve for those problems. If I bring the two of those together, I have a better outcome. I have a more powerful, I have a more monetizable interest and outcome from bringing those two together. I'm able to solve more problems. So if we step forward. So what this really means is that, yes, we can solve for discrete problems. We can remain compliant. But to really drive change and an important revenue generating monetizable outcome, you must be able to combine these approaches. And this is something that we look at doing and we work with our clients to do on a daily basis. So classic case of synergy, some of the parts is greater than the individual parts themselves. So without further ado, I'm just going to leave you with these thoughts. If you have any questions or you anything comes to mind, please feel free, reach out to me. You can ping an email to the information on this website. And uh, we'd be more than welcome to have a chat with you and to explain more and share more information with, uh, uh, with you about our experiences over the last 20, 30, 40 years, depending on which our area is, and um, to see how some of those would resonate with you. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And without further ado, I shall hand you off. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope you enjoyed the discussion. Don't forget to join us for our next RegTech Virtual Summit in November, details of which can be found on regtechinsight.com.